Nuclear energy is a key part of energy transition. Climate change is a huge concern. So what's exciting about SMRs? The potential market for SMRs is projected to hit 375 gigawatts of installed capacity by 2050. We need to secure long-term offtake agreements with solid industrial partners who have strong balance sheets. Hey there! Welcome to All Things Nuclear with Diana. Today I am super excited to share my experiences from the IAEA, the first ever SMR conference 2024 held in Vienna. This event was a monumental gathering of experts, stakeholders and enthusiasts from around the globe, all coming together to discuss small modular reactors or SMRs and their essential role in shaping the future of nuclear energy. As IAEA Director General Rafael Grossi said, nuclear energy is a key part of energy transition. Before we jump in, if you love exploring nuclear innovations as much as I do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Let's dive right in. SMRs are gaining attention as they offer a fresh and innovative approach to meet the urgent need for sustainable power. Climate change is a huge concern, and countries worldwide are on the lookout for alternatives to traditional fossil fuels. So what's exciting about SMRs? They not only enhance safety features and shorten construction times, but they also adapt seamlessly to various energy needs, providing a versatile solution for a cleaner energy landscape. Picture this, the potential market of SMRs is projected to hit 375 gigawatts of installed capacity by 2050. That's enough energy to power millions of homes sustainably. Isn't that mind-blowing? What do you think this means for our energy future? Let me know in the comments below. At the conference, we witnessed incredible participation from nations including the United States, Canada, South Korea, Argentina, the United Kingdom, Finland, France, Spain, Kuwait, Indonesia, Poland, Ukraine, just to name a few. It was energizing to see such a diverse mix of organizations and governments coming together all focusing on the advancement of SMR technology. Now let's spotlight some of the cool designs that caught my eye during the conference. First up, South Korea with their ISMR, which integrates state-of-the-art safety systems to minimize risks and eliminate large-scale accidents. This reactor, developed by Korea Hydro and Nuclear Power, is designed to provide an electrical output of 170 megawatts, making it a robust option for both energy generation and supply to smart grids. A standout feature of the ISMR is its passive safety system. It utilizes natural phenomena such as gravity and natural circulation to manage cooling without the need for external power. This design philosophy truly enhances safety and reliability. Now let's zoom over to the US and Japan and check out the BWRX300 from GE Hitachi Nuclear Energy, a powerhouse in the SMR space. This remarkable reactor is set to deliver around 300 megawatt of electrical power using a streamlined boiling water reactor design. That's all about efficiency. I'm particularly impressed by the BWRX300 advanced manufacturing techniques that enable prefabrication of modules. This allows for a super fast construction timeline just 24 to 36 months and fewer headaches on site. Plus, it boasts up to 60% lower capital costs per megawatt compared to traditional reactors, making it a competitive player in the energy market. And let's not forget about safety. 
The BWRX300 is designed to eliminate large loss of coolant accidents, which simplifies the safety systems and enhances reliability. With the ability to passively cool itself for up to seven days without any operator action, it truly prioritizes safety and peace of mind. This reactor is well equipped to deliver clean, reliable energy for generations. Now let's spotlight a new scale power module, a trailblazing solution hailing from the United States. This reactor is recognized as the first and only SMR design to receive design approval from the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The new scale power module features a scalable design that allows for the installation of multiple modules, with configurations available in 4-module, 6 and 12-module arrangements. Each module generates 77 megawatts, meaning that a fully realized Voyager 12 plant can deliver a robust 924 megawatts of clean energy, ideal for meeting diverse power needs. What's super appealing about the new scale design is its flexibility. Utilities can begin with a smaller number of modules and gradually expand their capacity based on demand. This incremental approach allows for smart investment, ensuring that energy generation can scale with customer needs and align with regulatory approvals. Safety is key here. The new scale SMR is equipped with a fully passive safety system that operates independently, ensuring reactor safety without the need for human intervention, external power, or manual control. This design prioritizes safety and reliability, making it an exceptional option for providing consistent carbon-free energy. Moreover, the Voyager plant has unique features, such as a reduced emergency planning down that only extends to the plant's boundary, allowing for placement in locations close to communities and existing infrastructure. With its innovative design and comprehensive safety features, the new scale power module stands at the forefront of the new era in nuclear energy technology. Now let's shift our focus to China and dive into the fantastic HTRPM, the world's first commercial high-temperature gas-cooled Pavel Bat modular reactor. This incredible piece of technology represents a significant leap forward in nuclear energy, and I can't wait to share all the details. The HTRPM is equipped with two reactors, each generating an impressive 250 megawatt thermal collectively producing around 210 megawatt of electricity. But it doesn't stop there. This versatile design not only powers homes, but also supports various industrial applications, making it a game changer for energy efficiency. What really sets the HTR PM apart? It smartly uses helium as a coolant and graphite as a moderator. These materials not only enhance safety, but also allow the reactor to handle extreme temperatures, up to 1,620 degrees Celsius. With its innovative pebble bed fuel design, the reactor can continue to cool itself passively. How cool is that? Since its operational launch in December 2021, the HTRPM has showcased groundbreaking safety features, maintaining safe operating conditions all on its own. This facility is a significant step in China's energy landscape and aligns perfectly with their ambitious carbon neutrality goals. It's a real testament of what the future of energy can look like. Speaking of innovation, let's talk about Finland. This country is not just sitting back. They're shaking things up with their regulatory framework for small modular reactors. The Finnish Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority is leading the charge working alongside the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Deployment 
to roll out a more flexible licensing process. This innovative approach is paramount for welcoming new nuclear technologies and ensures that safety remains the top priority, while Finland strives for carbon neutrality. What's particularly exciting is that Finland's regulatory reforms are designed to accommodate new applications beyond just electricity production, like district heating and industrial processes. By introducing a risk-oriented approach, the regulations are becoming more adaptable, allowing for a single set of goal-based rules that cater to various reactor types. Similarly, Ukraine is also stepping up. The State Nuclear Regulatory Inspectorate of Ukraine is launching a pre-licensing review process to streamline the licensing of SMRs. Ukraine's regulatory framework is evolving to be more technology-neutral and performance-based, aligning with international safety standards. This proactive strategy helps to identify potential issues early allowing necessary design changes without delaying projects. Such approach is crucial, especially as Ukraine works to rebuild its infrastructure post-war. It's all about strengthening their energy independence while embracing new, cleaner technologies. Now let's dive into the essential aspect of SMR deployment financing and economic appraisals. This topic is vital because securing the right funding can be the difference between success and stagnation in our quest for clean energy solutions. Many governments, especially in the US and European Union, are stepping up with grants, tax credits, and other financial initiatives to kickstart initial demonstration projects but we need a sustainable strategy to keep the momentum rolling. Imagine leveraging project financing models inspired by energy and mining sectors. This is how we ensure SMRs are bankable. We need to secure long-term offtake agreements with solid industrial partners who have strong balance sheets. Now let's explore the fantastic governmental and multilateral incentives. We are facing challenges in the nuclear sector with first-mover concerns, holding back progress. But countries globally are introducing legal regimes that support SMR projects with tax breaks, loan guarantees, and financial assistance. This blend of support is pivotal for setting the stage for SMR projects in various international markets. But it's not all smooth sailing. We must tackle the crucial risks involved in financing advanced reactors. That's where the concept of Public-Private Partnership 3.0 comes in. This strategy focuses on negotiating risk sharing and credit support between industry players and government agencies, ensuring these projects are financially viable and successful. And let's not overlook project management. Successful nuclear projects require competitive designs alongside a robust management strategy. By incorporating implementation variables early on, we can realistically evaluate financing and timelines, minimizing risks associated with construction and operations. Finally, the economic viability of SMRs relies heavily on understanding costs. While initial costs might be higher, the potential for cost reduction through enhanced modularization strategies is significant. This is key for SMRs to compete not just with traditional nuclear plants, but also with renewables. As we wrap up our journey through the IAEA SMR Conference 2024, it's clear that advancements in SMR technology 
offer a beacon of hope for achieving energy sustainability and security. The collaboration among nations and the continuous evolution of regulatory frameworks will be vital in bringing these innovative designs to life. I want to extend a huge thank you to the IAEA Press Office for an opportunity to attend such a significant event. And thank you for joining me today on All Things Nuclear with Diana. If you found this information valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on what topics you'd like me to cover next. What challenges do you think the nuclear industry needs to overcome for SMRs to thrive? Let's keep this conversation going. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the world of nuclear innovation.